Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, June 2nd to Saturday, June 8th. Okay, so last week we were closing out May and of course we're transitioning into June and if you're with me here Friday evening, we're still very much in the May vibe but we feel June pulling us in. A lot of that has to do with the moon kind of completing its transit through the zodiac wheel, completing its time through Pisces energy, launching us into Aries energy, a brand new beginning, brand new clean slate, brand new emotional cycle, brand new pep in our step to kick off a brand new month. We are also kind of wrapping up Mercury's time in Taurus energy. We're going to see Mercury on the move here very, very soon in this new month we have a lot to process we have a lot going on we have a lot that we have to kind of you know realize that we have to put behind us before we can actually start pursuing a path in this new direction of course we just had the last quarter moon in this pisces energy to give us an overview of all the things that have popped off over this past month, kind of seeing the spiritual life lessons emerging out of some of the struggle and conflict that we've very much been in. This is like an aha moment where we're bringing everything full circle and again, preparing to jump into a brand new vibration, a brand new energy. So of course, this week we are kicking off June. There is an energy forecast out there for your listening pleasure. I'll give you all the rundowns of all the different resources and what you can do to kind of stay ahead of the game here in just a second. But of course, as soon as we jump into June, we have this moon in Aries energy pushing us forward, bossing us up, putting us in a different, I'm going to say mind space to be bold and brave and courageous enough to actually break free from some of the conflict that we've been very immersed in over the last couple of weeks. We will see Mercury move into Gemini energy, his rulership here on the third, just days before the new moon in Gemini that will be popping off all the sixth. So here it is, the sixth month, the sixth day. Is this a numerological portal? I'll leave that up to you. This is also going to be the last week that Mars, the god of war, ruling over physical energy, drive, passion, desire, even our anger, will be in his rulership in Aries energy. He will be shifting into Taurus energy on the 9th. That is definitely going to kind of calm down some of this aggression, this agitation, this frustration, these ants in our pants. Definitely going to be a different vibe. But of course, as we wrap different cycles up, there's an intensity that definitely comes with that particular finality, that completion point. And we do have to expect that Mars kind of leaving his rulership is definitely going to be the fireworks, the buildup of energy, the intensity, if you will, of this whole entire transit kind of popping off before we get grounded and anchored and slow down in that Taurus energy. So a lot popping off this week and definitely putting us in a totally different frame of mind, which of course the Gemini energy naturally does. Okay, so first of all, just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below, making it a very beautiful channel to scroll through. I thank you so much for the continued love and support. And I thank those of you that have also transitioned over to my Patreon. Something new this month, I have made the Zodiac forecast available for all paid tiers. Uh, Before, it was just the silver and gold tier that gained access to that. So my bronze people, y'all all get access to that particular content as well. And of course, there are free previews to that paid content. So even jumping over as a free member on my Patreon will gain you a little bit of access to some of that paid content. Of course, if you want to avoid Patreon, you can download your June Zodiac forecast from my website. It is definitely a little bit more pricier over there. You're getting a much better deal on Patreon, but at least the option is there and available to you. I do also want to mention that my booking calendar for June is now going to be available to the public as of June 1st. Of course, my Patreon members get first dibs on those particular appointments, getting access to that calendar just a couple of days before we enter into a new month. But now that 
those particular spots have been taken, whatever is left over will be available for everyone else to kind of jump on now that we're moving into June. I am going to kind of recommend that you listen to the June energy forecast that I put out there for your listening pleasure. Um, I am going to recommend that even downloading the Gemini season e-guide is going to be proving to be very valuable, especially in the ever-changing energy shifts of this week coming at us. And of course, there will be a new moon guide episode available for your participation and listening pleasure as well. If you're interested in that, available probably towards the end of the week. I like to release those pretty much a day, maybe even two days in advance prior to that moon event. So that will definitely be coming at you as well. There's a lot of resources out there and it's really recommended that you stay ahead of the game. There is a lot of energy coming at us here in June, just because again, Gemini season, time accelerates. We are being kind of pressurized to challenge our mind space and really kind of experience and explore new options and opportunities. And we're being pressurized to make these choices and decisions and pivots, if you will, um, as we kind of move towards that solstice energy that of course is gonna lock in the karmic vibration and frequency and life lesson and chapter, that we will be working with well into the fall. So a lot of information out there for you to sort through it, Gemini season. Information is the name of the game. We definitely want to stay ahead of all of these energy shifts as they are really going to put a lot of pressure, especially on our headspace. So let's talk about some of the ascension symptoms that we can expect from some of the energy shifts this week. First of all, just kind of playing off the fact that, you know, the intensity is definitely being felt in the headspace. You may find yourself having dizzy spouts. Maybe you're getting up too fast and all of a sudden everything goes black. Yes, of course, make sure you're up on your nutrients and on your minerals. However, this is also part and parcel of just having the pressure in the head. Um, Whether the world is spinning for you or not, whether you find yourself in dizzy moments or not, that head pressure is definitely feeling more and more like the bobblehead situation where our heads are much bigger than our physical bodies and it feels much heavier, I would say, to kind of carry this big head uh, filled with information, thoughts and opinions around these particular days. We're being challenged to really expand on our narratives, on our inner dialogues, on our perspectives, on our thoughts, on our ideas, on our opinions. And of course, having Jupiter now, who is the great magnifier and expander in Gemini energy, really, really pushing us to challenge our mind. Now, I'm going to go on a little tiny bit of a tangent, not a huge one, because a lot of the topics and themes that I want to talk about are just not for YouTube type of topics and themes that I won't get penalized for. Um, But I want to talk about the basically astrology in action. What I mean by that is I'm not sure if you're up on it, um, but this whole Terrence Howard being on the Joe Rogan episode and talking about, you know, needing the new periodic table and understanding fractals and basically the uh, multiplication type of situation that, of course, has everybody up in arms. The interesting thing to me, and again, I'm, I'm going to make it very, very easy to kind of, you know, understand how the astrology comes into play here. Jupiter just moved into Gemini energy and Jupiter is about to push us out of our comfort zones in the way that we have thought about things in the way that we have understood things in the way that we've had certain perspectives about things. And the Gemini energy, of course, is very rooted in intelligence and information and knowledge. And the the Jupiter part of it is now trying to bring in wisdom, you know, from our intuition and from life experiences and trying to blend that intuition with that intellect and see what we come up with. And because, again, we have Saturn in Pisces energy, we're looking to deconstruct the old ways of pretty much everything the old ways of religion, of belief systems, of dreams, of visions, of pain, of trauma. Like we're just looking to deconstruct the way that the world has been. Again, we're moving into the age of Aquarius here. So that means that we have to put a close to the age of Pisces, which was all about confusion and delusion. 
And the Aquarius age is all about, you know, consciousness and awareness and intelligence and seeing where it is that we can improve and do better, especially where science and technology is concerned. And so I thought it was very, very funny that here we have Jupiter move into Gemini energy. And again, first time in like 12 years that this particular energy is kind of playing at us. And the very first thing that comes out under this transit is this Terrence Howard, Joe Rogan episode. Now, let me be very clear. If you do not understand what he's talking about, that doesn't mean that he is wrong. Okay. It doesn't even matter if you agree or if you understand with some of the concepts in which he's talking about. The point is, is that he's opening up a topic of conversation that everybody seems to be paying attention to, whether it is good energy, bad energy, whether it's in agreement or disagreement, whether it's with understanding or misunderstanding, doesn't matter. We're all kind of focused on really looking at the information that we basically have been indoctrinated with through our schooling system. And now we're challenging whether or not it needs revision, it needs improvement, whether or not it's even valid in some instances. So, you know, when we talk about like the uh, the power of intention, when the collective is focused on something, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter if it's good or bad, doesn't matter if it's 3D, if it's 5D, doesn't matter what we're even talking about here. When the collective spends its time, its energy, its attention on focusing on something that we're all focused on, it gives it power, right? So it's like we are giving this particular topic and theme power. Now, again, let me just remind you, the Gemini energy is divisive right? Gemini energy is represented by the twins. And within one twin, that particular twin is divided uh, pretty much two ways. Why? Because we all have masculine and feminine energy within us. Within that masculine, there is toxic masculine and, and divine masculine. Within that feminine energy, there's toxic feminine. There is divine feminine. And then, so there's four parts of oneself there. And then the other twin has the exact same. And so we're dealing with the complexities, the fragments of self. And so the division that takes place within ourselves when we're challenged with such concepts, first of all, is where, you know, the healing and the evolving and the growth happens first and foremost. But then secondary to that, we're seeing the division amongst the collective. There are people that are listening to Terrence and literally think that he's unhinged and crazy because of the level of perception, the level of awareness, the level of consciousness that they themselves are operating from. Then you have people that are intelligent enough to understand the concepts in which they're talking about that may not actually agree. They are in comprehension of it. They understand what he's talking about. They don't see him as unhinged. They see him as an intelligent being brought bringing forth new concepts, new theories that, you know, may be of interest or may not doesn't really matter that you may be in agreement with or disagreement with doesn't really matter. The point is, is that th this particular episode, this particular conversation, this particular topic and theme is gaining a lot of attention. It's, it's basically demanding a lot of energy. It is holding a lot of awareness right now. And I think that that is a beautiful thing. Now, of course, division isn't quite a beautiful thing. But of course, with Pluto in Aquarius energy, although he's currently retrograde, and of course, he will be retrograding back in the Capricorn energy. But the whole point of Pluto being in this Aquarius energy is to bring society to a new form. And with that Aquarius energy, it is highly likely that we're going to see society break off in like-minded groups. And so, you know, I've been talking about this for a while, but like within those groups of like-minded people, you're still going to have division amongst those like-minded groups. So here we have Pluto looking to totally transform the societal structure into like-minded individuals or into like-minded groups. And then you have Saturn in this Pisces energy trying to deconstruct the way that we've previously done things, especially where belief systems, religion, philosophy is concerned. 
And then you have Jupiter now in this Gemini energy, really magnifying our ability to have conversations and debates about intellectual topics and themes that many people, to be quite honest with you, are not educated enough to actually have. And so again, here we all have this group mentality, like the collective is focused on this particular topic and theme. There is division within these groups. There's like-mindedness in these groups as well. But at the same time, the power, the energy, the attention is being brought to the fundamental basics of our education system. And if you've been with me for any amount of time, you would know that I believe that the education system has got to go. The healthcare system has got to go. The whole capitalistic industrialized, you know, sector of the world and realm in which we've created has got to go. We basically need to collapse all of the systems and structures that basically are putting us in the state of, let's call it hell on earth that we're all currently in. It is not meant for the people, it is meant for the very small group of one percenters to actually succeed in. And therefore, Pluto's time in Aquarius over the next, you know, 20 something years will bring a lot more power to the people, a lot more sovereignty to the people. But again, kind of dividing the collective up in like minded little groups. So from a 3D perspective, we could say, OK, so nationalism will be a thing. Well, maybe. Uh, politics will now be a like-minded thing that creates division within that group. Okay, well, could be. Uh, but from a, you know, a higher spiritual 5D perspective, we are further separating those that are willing to evolve and to grow and those that are not, both in the physical realm and in the spiritual realm. We have to kind of weed things out. We're in the process of elimination right now, right in our calendar, as far as, you know, this, uh, let's call it June goes or Gemini season goes, that's like the micro scale of it. But like, we're closing out big chapters here, like thousands of years chapters. And, and this is what I'm getting at is that the current energies that are swirling right now are destabilizing the structures of a lot of topics and themes that many people have never thought of. Not very many people sit around and are like, hmm, I'm going to challenge the periodic table. Hmm, I'm going to challenge the, the, you know, math. I'm going to challenge science. I'm going to challenge everything that we were taught or slash indoctr indoctrinated with through the school system. We don't have too many people bringing these particular topics and themes up because, of course, uh, the greater, grander, let's call them powerful structure people here, they don't want us to be educated and informed. They don't want us to test those theories. And so you're going to say, oh, you're going to have all these people go, oh, Terrence Howard, he's our new superstar. He's going to be the one to lead us in the evolution. No, no, they're all just playing a role. OK, we have to understand this, especially celebrities, especially people who have huge, huge platforms, even if they are going against the grain. Somebody is giving them permission to do that, because if they were actually speaking about things that the group of power people didn't want to come out, trust me, they'd be non-existent in this world to even speak. So I know a lot of people have thoughts on Joe Rogan. Um it doesn't matter whether you are operating from the 3D and say, oh, he's he's a plant. He's controlled opposition. Doesn't matter. He's playing a part. We're all here to play a part. This is a greater, grander uh, fabric that we are weaving in time and space here. And so for those that are kind of, you know, thinking so small, like, oh, Joe Rogan is a plant. OK, great. I, I challenge you to rise up over that particular perspective and understand that we are all playing a part to kind of collapse what it is that we've been living in in order to actually start fresh. Now, here's where I'm going with my nether sticky topic, and I'm just dreading even letting the words come out of my mouth because I know the private messages and the comments that I'm going to get on this particular video, but whatever. The information that just came out about Trump, okay? 
Now you have a group of people that do not give an F about convicted felons, about, you know, this whole court system, and that are now going to double down on backing Trump. Now, if you're operating from a level of awareness that still thinks that Trump is the underdog, that Trump is here to expose the corruption, then I challenge you to rise up and please understand that he is also playing a part. We're all playing a part, but he is more controlled than you would want to believe. And the whole point here is to give this underdog energy to Trump so that, again, they're trying to provoke a civil war. If you haven't seen that already, if you don't understand that already, I really, really welcome you to boss up and really just see it from the greater, grander perspective. This isn't something like, oh, you know, Trump's only been on the scene since 2016. You have to understand that these plans that are basically unfolding now on the greater, grander stage, this dates back to like the 50s and 60s, okay? This has nothing, this has nothing to do with, you know, Trump as an individual, as he is just playing a part. And people are gonna say, oh, well, he's a part of them. And, you know, he he is a part of the the big, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm not choking here. I'm trying to use words that aren't gonna get me banned. Um, you have people that think that he is the savior, that he is the one that is exposing the corruption. You, If you still are operating from that mindset, please understand that you are also being duped, okay? There is this art of war that you have to understand. There's a greater, grander battlefield that is at play here. This is more than just politics. And if you don't understand that the oppositional politicians that go against each other are on the same team being funded by the same people, then that is the first thing that you need to be aware of to understand that politicians are merely puppets playing a part. This is a greater, grander scheme here to get everybody up in a uproar, basically, again, division, so that Again, the people are going to take it upon themselves to build up this certain point of animosity against the other team, let's call it, that they are supposed to be opposed because, again, the minute that you allow uh, a group of people to kind of go at each other at a certain level of animosity, the bigger governing systems are going to be able to make a call such as martial law and then every, the, game, it's, the game is over for everyone. Okay, so what I'm getting at here is that Jupiter moving into Gemini energy, I told you it was going to be information overload. And I also said to not trust the information and the details when they first come out, especially as we move through Gemini season, because we are not gaining clarity. They want you to think that you're gaining clarity. You're not. There's hidden details. There are hidden details that will not emerge until I'm going to say a group of people are so stubborn and hell-bent and firmly planted on their particular perspective and opinion of what's going on here, that they're not going to be able to adjust and adapt to the hidden information when it comes out. Because again, cognitive distances is, is a real thing. I know I slurred that. Let me just also say, side note, I don't know if y'all are feeling Mercury retrograde-ish with all of this Gemini energy, but I am having the hardest time. My brain is not working. I am not connecting to my words properly. I have had to edit pretty much every single piece of content that I've put out in the last couple of weeks. And that's not normal for me. I usually free flow and don't have to edit at all. Um, I'm just before, you know, I get the grammar police coming at me and telling me that I don't pronounce words correctly or whatever. That's why. OK. OK. Anywho, the what I'm getting at here is that we just had some huge amounts, a, a huge wave of information thrown at us, even just between the Terrence Howard thing and the Trump thing. And both are creating division. Both are challenging us to kind of expand out of our current understanding and viewpoint. And both are going to change the game for this next karmic chapter that we're going to be working on and working with moving into the fall. And so when I said astrology in action, this is what I mean by that. The minute that we have a major shift take place in the astrological positions, these are the types of things that manifest. And it's all furthering an already sought out agenda because, again, the small group of people that want to stay in power, they've been using astrology like clockwork, for clockwork, for their moves being made. 
And again, like, you know, for those that, that say, oh, well, you can't, you know, don't, don't dabble in astrology because that's, that's from the devil. Okay. Well, you continue to think that you're missing out on the game in order to, uh, play chess. You have to understand how to play chess. Okay. And when it doesn't matter if you like chess or not, if you're in a position where you have to play chess, it's better for you to know how to play chess than to not play chess. And I particularly enjoy astrology because I understand that astrology can be manifested in two ways, many more ways actually than two. But realistically speaking, if you have a not so nice disposition, a heavier energy with nefarious thoughts, you're able to manifest these energies in a way that puts you in a place of power, but that makes other people struggle. The reason why moving into the age of Aquarius, astrology is going to become more and more of a thing is because when you understand that the game that is being played is very much in alignment with the astrological configuration of energies that have happened in the past that we have remnants of and evidence of, of certain patterns and topics and themes popping off when there's certain astrological things happening here, you have to understand that the evildoers, they depend on astrology for their timing, for their events. So whether you understand astrology or whether you enjoy astrology doesn't really matter. You should know astrology to understand that the game that is being played that is very much affecting you, whether you choose to engage in that game or not, again, personal choice. But I, for one, enjoy greatly sitting back, watching the energy shift and then watching how they manifest on the, the greater global stage. And so that was my mini rant, because, again, we are just dipping our toe in this very long one year transit of Jupiter being in Gemini energy. And of course, we're in Gemini season. So we're being challenged to think differently, to see different perspectives. We are in Gemini energy. So we're going to be kind of overloaded with information to keep us confused, because, again, in your own individual life, many people are confused right now, not knowing which way to go, not knowing what's around the corner, not knowing how to break free from what it is that we've been living in and advance ourselves towards something different. On the greater, grander collective stage, the more people that are in a state of confusion, the more people that are easily influenced by the narrative in which the smaller group of people that want to stay in power want you to be in because it lessens your power, your control, your information, your knowledge. So the name of the game here is information is power, right? They have all the information. They're using it to their advantage. Let's empower ourselves. And yes, I know that using uh, language such as them and us is very divisive as well. And we're supposed to be leaning towards unification here. But as far as the 3D realm goes, which we are all living in, take a good look around your physical form, walking this physical earth plane. Um, we are here watching this physical chess game play out here in the physical realm. And that means that we have to be aware of the games being played, whether or not you're sitting on the bench or not, or whether you're an active player, you still need to understand the rules of the game. And here we are. Okay, so that was my little that was my little mini tangent is just how interesting it is to watch astrology in action, how interesting it is to watch people's head explode. Uh, how interesting it is to watch people literally lose their damn mind and how interesting it is to watch those of us that are kind of aware of what's going on uh, now take a very, I'm going to say, well-earned position to act as the observer and not take part of any of it. Just sit back and kind of observe, be semi-entertained with some particular instances. And I cannot wait to see um, the conversations that now kind of uh, get brought up and the topics and themes that now get exposed um, due to these very small seeds from Terrence Howard and from this Trump situation be planted. This is just the very, very tip of the iceberg. And I think it's going to definitely get more heated and more entertaining and more interesting in the best and in the worst kind of ways. Again, very important to act as the observer. Okay, so yes, let's get back to the physical symptoms here. Um, the head pressure is going to continue, especially once Mercury moves into Gemini energy. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my goodness. We are so lucky that Mercury doesn't spend so much time in, in his rulership and his place of power because our heads will literally explode. Um, if you listen to the June energy forecast, you would know that we are only going to be in uh, this mercurial Gemini situation for a couple of weeks. We'll have Mercury and Venus move on to Cancer energies hand in hand on the 17th, which is going to come as a very welcome shift at the beginning. Although once we get settled in that particular energy, that's going to become a little bit intense for totally different reasons, which we'll cover when we actually get there. Um, but just know that the head pressure, the information overload, the constant challenge that we are being faced with of trying to get rid of the negative narrative and adopt a better perspective, that is very hard at this particular point in time. Because again, the division in our headspace, between our heart and our head, between the concepts in our headspace, between the choices, the options, the decisions, they have to be extreme. They have to be polarized. They have to be very dualistic in nature because we're still at the beginning of Gemini season. As Gemini season unpacks and unfolds, that new moon in Gemini will likely give us, I'm going to say, more information to use as the process of elimination than anything else. You know, people are always like, oh, well, I need clarity. Okay, so you're looking for the specific detailed description and answer of what it is that you need to be doing, or do you need information and details to highly suggest what it is that you're no longer in alignment with? People don't see that as clarity. People receive information, details, and knowledge that could make one choice more favorable over the other, but because it's not clear cut in, hey, this is the answer, people still get kind of confused and think that they need more clarity. The new moon in Gemini is likely going to give us information and details for us to see what we don't want, what, what isn't favorable, what doesn't make sense to us, may not give us the answers that we're looking for. But by the time that we actually go through most of these energy shifts and we complete Gemini season, we will arrive at the quote unquote information destination that we're currently searching for at this particular point in time. Because again, time accelerates, pressure increases, we basically have to choose a very dramatic pivot point towards the end of Gemini season because, again, that's what we lock in under the solstice energy. That cancer season is about establishing a new foundation for us to be operating off of, and that will essentially, that solstice energy, karmically speaking, lock us into a different path, a different direction, different vibration and frequency, and that's what we're going to be working on carrying us into the fall. So yeah, we definitely have a lot going on. I know I kind of previously talked about like the Mercury retrograde-ish, but like communication is very hard right now. Um, it's sketchy as F, I would say. There's a lot of animosity just underneath the surface of our awareness. And I do blame Mars being in Aries energy for that. There's a lot of aggression. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of frustration. And it's really coming out in some very destructive communication issues. Um, and like I said, it, it's funny. Uh, last week when I talked about how many people were struggling with like neighbor situations and blow ups and like neighborhood dysfunctions and disputes and stuff, how many people actually agreed with that? Isn't it amazing? Like I know you could say, okay, well, you know, to a certain degree, I could pretty much say anything. I could pluck anything out of the sky and say it, and I'm going to have a certain amount of people agree with me. I get it. But isn't it amazing how particular that we can get in talking about some of the things popping off due to these energies and then seeing worldwide, because, you know, I have a beautiful community here that spreads worldwide of all of these people that are having such similar situations like, to me, that is magical. Like, that to me will never get old. I love, love, love talking about weird ass shit here in the Ascension forecast. Very particular shit, too, just accordance to the, you know, energies at play. And then seeing how many people are actually going through the same thing. And if this isn't validation and confirmation that we're never alone and we're never going through something on our own and by ourselves and solo quests and solo adventures... It is these types of conversations, this type of comment section where everybody's in agreement that neighbors have been like cray cray, people are losing their minds, the anger has reached an all time high, um, very, you know, Mercury retrograde ish with communication and technology. 
I don't know about y'all, but my, my computer has decided that it, it just does not want to compute anymore. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no telltale of why it is acting the way that it's acting, but it's very Mercury retrograde-ish. And I know that that shouldn't even be like a term, a verb, a thing, but it is. That's the very first thing I thought to myself was, oh my goodness. And then I talked to somebody else and they were having computer issues. Talked to somebody else, their Wi-Fi was acting up. Talked to somebody else, they almost stabbed their printer. And I'm thinking, hmm, this is very Mercury retrograde-ish type of complaints. What is going on? But I think it's just the buildup of the Gemini energy. I also think that we have reached certain peak energies as far as the you know solar flares, the CMEs, the blasts coming in. Uh, to the Earth's atmosphere, like we've actually established um, a, I'm going to call it higher baseline that we will never kind of dip below at this particular point. And I think, I think for for many reasons, there's just a high level of electricity going through the cosmos right now. And of course, electricity has a major effect on our electrical devices. And for me, I'm just piecing it together that this is why my computer has decided to go on strike. Anywho, my brain is also on strike, apparently, and my mouth seems to be on strike as well, because, again, nothing's connecting. It's almost like I have moments where I, I feel like a genius, like I'm like, oh, my God, that was such a smart thought. And then I lose it and I forget it. And I'm like, oh, I'm so dumb. I just lost it. You know what I mean? So it's like, again, the division of the Gemini energy and again, the thoughts, the moment of genius, the aha moments, if you will. Uh, they come on and we feel on top of the world like we just solved the world's problems. And then just as fast as it comes on, it leaves us making us feel real dumb, real dumb. I know I'm not the only one. Come on, guys. Tell me I'm not the only one that goes from feeling like an absolute genius to an absolute dumbass in literally 60 seconds or less. This is just the ups and downs, the highs, the lows of Gemini season that I, for one, cannot wait to put behind me because I don't enjoy this type of roller coaster. So yeah, information overload and like in our headspace, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but we're actually processing information on different levels, meaning, yeah, we have a lower level intellect. That's where Mercurial and Gemini energy rule over. We have a higher level of our intellect, which is where Uranus rules over. And then we have like our higher self that doesn't really connect to our, let's call it mental intelligence at all because it's... uh I want to call it cosmic intelligence, but it's also semi artificial intelligence because again, we're picking up on the hive mind of the collective and that in itself is semi artificial at play. And, and, and this is going to bring me on a different tangent. So, you know, forgive me, but I really think it's funny how we're in a situation right now where AI is becoming more and more of a presence in our lives. And I, I also think it's funny how so many people are divided on the topics and themes of AI, meaning, you know, there are a lot of very beautiful, positive, brilliant things that we could be using AI for. And I think a lot of the concern of people who aren't for AI just know that if it falls in the wrong hands of the evildoers, then again, it's a very dangerous concept. But I often laugh at the fact because I guess maybe it's just because I have a different perspective or I have a different set of beliefs. And again, I'm not asking you to align with what I think or what I believe. But when are we going to figure out that it's not the computers that are the artificial intelligence, that is actually us that are the artificial intelligence? Like, I don't know why most like why more people don't get that. And you're going to say, well, what do you mean? We're not artificial. Really? Aren't we? We are literally holographic avatars that are taking on a physical density in order to actually appear as materialized individuals that are basically streaming a higher form of intelligence that we can't explain coming from a higher life force energy that does not exist here in the physical earth plane. And we are essentially building machines that we are deeming to be artificial intelligence that feed off of our intelligence when realistically we as beings are feeding off of a higher form of intelligence. And you're going to tell me that we're not the AI? I just don't get it. Anywho, again, something to challenge your mind, something to really just sit and percolate about. Um, but I think it's a very interesting dynamic. I have people, you know, pretty much ask me all the time about the artificial intelligence versus the spiritual intelligence. And to a certain degree, yeah, they're different, but also they're the exact same. 
And it's it's this type of perspective and mindset that we need the collective to get at to be able to hold, I'm going to say, opposing thoughts at the exact same time, right? It doesn't need to be either or. It can be and. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that spirituality and science go hand to hand. And again, there's a huge group of people that still see it as a, as a very divisive topic and theme. You know, spirituality can't exist without the fundamental understandings of science and science to a certain degree doesn't even exist without the spiritual component and the realization that everything is connected. Um, they, they can't exist without each other. And, and this is what I mean. I know we live in a dualistic earth plane and where polarization is the name of the game, but spiritually speaking, as advanced beings, you should be at a particular point in your healing journey, in your growth, in your soul's evolution, where you're able to see the macro and the micro at the same time, where you're able to see the conflicting and opposing topics and themes come together at a certain point of unification. This is where we all need to kind of get to. And so I just think it's an interesting topic and theme when people talk about AI as if it's, you know, a danger to society in a way that they don't see us human beings as a certain division of AI and how dangerous we are to the earth and to each other. And so we're merely putting our quote unquote consciousness in a what we believe to be non-sentient being where I think that's the fear is that, you know, you, you watch shows like iRobot and stuff like this. It's like to a certain extent, these robots will grow and grow to be sentient and then we're all in trouble. Well, what do you think human beings did? We evolved from, you know, unconscious beings into conscious beings. We are, we went from, you know, Neanderthal uh, non-development in our frontal lobe to activation in the frontal lobe, which again has triggered the spiritual worship gene within us. And you're going to say that science and spirituality are two different things. I don't think so. Anyways, that's just the way that my brain works. I'm exhausted. I don't know if y'all are exhausted, but information overload and just different topics and themes to contemplate and to challenge yourself on is the name of the game. And it's exhausting. So many of us kind of feeling that exhaustion point. May I also remind you, we are in an elimination phase and we will be in an elimination phase up until the new moon in Gemini. And an elimination phase is basically a review and a reflection of where it is that you're currently at with the information and details that you currently have available to you and trying to figure out what needs to stay and what needs to go. This is the purging process, the surrendering process, the releasing process, the elimination process that is needed in order to whittle away what it is that we are no longer wanting to pour into in order for the new moon intentions to actually be seeded and planted on what it is that we would be preferring instead. So again, we are in the process of elimination. You may not gain the information, the clarity, the actual matter of fact description on what it is that you were looking for as far as clarity goes, but you're sure as hell being given hints and clues, validations and confirmations left, right and center of what isn't working anymore, what it is you no longer want to do, what you no longer want to pursue, who it is that you no longer want to be, who it is that you no longer want to share time, energy and space with. All of that is clarity. So again, changing your perspective on what clarity actually is, is it the actual factual answer that you're looking for? Or is it weeding away the answers that aren't working for you? Again, flip the script. So yes, a lot of people confuse a lot of people in a state of indecision, a lot of people kind of torn between should I stay? Should I go? Should I die? Should I grow? You know, and I don't mean die literally. Okay, so let's not get our panties in a bunch. Don't come at me about, you know, being insensitive to mental health issues. I'm not talking about that. Even though mental health issues are all the rage here in Gemini season, especially with Saturn in this Pisces energy, just making everybody lose their damn minds. The spiritual psychosis is just at an all time high. And that's why I like to not go into deep topics and themes here, especially on YouTube, because I like to keep this like a general audience type of thing. Uh, there's so many different people operating from so many different levels of awareness that it's hard to get everybody on the same page. And so, again, that is the collective goal here is to unify and to get on the same page. But it ain't happening in Gemini season. Division 
is all the name of the game here in order for us to arrive at a compromise point, which of course we will build a new foundation out of once we move into cancer season. So yeah, the emotions that we've been kind of going through, and it's funny because we don't really have a whole lot of placements in water and water is emotions. And so we're kind of low on emotion right now. However, a lot of people, because you're confused in your mental plane, think that that is a actual emotion. And this is where we intellectualize our emotions a lot of the time in Gemini season. And that's where we're going to have a rude awakening when we dive into the cancer energies that we'll be moving into as we move through the month of June, because then we have to feel what it is that we already thought our way through. And so people are like, oh my God, this emotional roller coaster being all over the place. It's not really an emotional roller coaster. We're actually really low on emotion right now. We're more intellectualized than anything. But that in itself can be exhausting. And I think because of the electricity, because of the nervous system stimulation, because of the anxiety that everybody's in, because of the edginess, the restlessness, the ants in the pants, this nervous energy that is taking over as of late, that gets labeled as emotion when really it's just unfocused energy. You need to give energy a focus, a concentration, a target, a goal, if you will. Otherwise, it just bounces around like a pinball machine. And of course, that is craziness and chaos that nobody needs to be thinking about, let alone feeling. And I don't know if you know what it sounds like to be in an arcade hearing all of those signs and pings and you know, whistles blowing and everything, but it's very, very overwhelming. It's very overstimulating and it gets us to a point of sensory exhaustion. And so what a lot of people are deeming to be an emotional roller coaster is actually a sensory overload situation that is going to continue. That is is probably going to amp up. I'm not going to I'm not going to try to smooth it over for you. Yes, when Mars moves into Taurus energy on the 9th, we are going to stabilize a little bit. We are going to calm down a little bit. We're going to be able to kind of gain our bearings, be a little bit more, let's call it controlled in our energy and in our emotions. But we have an intense blow up, boiling point, breakdown, breakthrough point going to take place long before Mars is going to be able to stabilize in that Earth energy. And so again, it's kind of happening all back to back here. Think of the nervous energy. Think of the anxious energy. Think of the unfocused energy of Gemini season. And then think of the last critical crisis karmic degree of Mars hitting in that rulership area of Aries energy before jumping into Taurus energy. You best believe that I'm going to say around the new moon, and then the two days following the new moon, shit will be popping, okay? Be prepared. Stay ahead of it. It is going to get spicy. Speaking of spicy, I want to talk about the sourness in our stomachs and in our mouths, the acid reflux, if you will. The spiciness, you know how when you eat a bunch of spicy food and you literally feel like your insides are burning? Well, you may not even be eating spicy food at this particular point, but you're going to feel that internalized burning sensation. Everything is kind of in an uproar, if you will. We're we're high in fluctuation. We're low in stabilization. And so, again, this is having a major effect on our central nervous systems. And that's why we get the bubble guts, because we have more nerves in our guts than we do pretty much anywhere else in our body. And so, again, if you haven't connected the fact that what you are focused on, what you think in your mental plane, if you or if you aren't aware of how much of an impact your thoughts have on your emotions and on your physical form, this this should be a good little exercise for you. I bet you 10 bucks you have stomach upset. I bet you you're going to have some acid reflux. I bet you're going to have some bubble guts. And I bet you if you were to stop and actually connect the dots to what it is that you were thinking about and focused on at the time in which your stomach starts kind of asking for your attention, you would connect it to the fact that whatever it is that you're thinking about is giving you some uneasy feelings, giving you a sour taste in your mouth, if you will, because again, anger and agitation are probably more dominant of a situation and demeanor at this particular point than anything else. We're just not having it. It doesn't feel good, doesn't look good, doesn't taste good. We are definitely going to feel the repercussions and consequences of that. This, again, we're in an eliminating phase. We've been eliminating foods, eliminating thoughts, eliminating topics and themes, eliminating emotions, in some cases, eliminating people. And that's okay, too. We are going through a, what I would call, detox to a certain extent. But this is the detox of the mind. This is the detox of what 
kind of consumes our time, energy, and attention. And again, the detox happens. Think of the scales. I know when we talk about scales, we think of Libra energy, but the Gemini energy creating the division in which it does in order for us to find a middle ground could very much be represented by the scales not being in balance and then tipping in the other favor and trying to become in balance and still not kind of hitting that sweet spot. So this is the majority of Gemini season in order for us to find that sweet spot. So for those that are out there banging their head against the wall, just waiting for clarity to come, I really invite you to take a good look at the hints and clues and gain clarity out of what it is that you think that you're currently not getting. Because I can guarantee you're in a situation, a circumstance right now that is not enjoyable, is not favorable, that you do not want to continue, but yet you're doing nothing to break away from it. That should be clarity enough. This is going to also resolve, calm, soothe a lot of the gut issues when you feel more in control of the information that you think that you don't have or that you're not getting. Look at the information in which you are getting. It may not be favorable, may not be the information that you want, but it is giving you a lot of valuable information to work with. I want to talk about the continuation of the dryness. Again, we're in air energy, so there's dryness, dry lips, itchy patches of skin, dry in your throat so we're still very thirsty we still have to stay very hydrated dry as in the air in which we're breathing dry in our eyes our eyes are dry our eyes are burning a lot of that is because we don't like what we're seeing as well but air energy nonetheless will dry us out but here's an oxymoron anybody else dry as f but yet are getting oily in their skin and in their hair again the division the weirdness the extremes a lot of that oiliness especially our face oils, is because our face is changing. One side it looks tighter, more together, more focused, more, I'm going to say, younger than the other side does. Again, division, Gemini energy, twins. We have to see the extremes before we're going to see the unification. But I find that the oiliness can definitely be even more validated by the amount of earwax that's suddenly going to just itch, itch your ears right to death and make you wanna clean your ears all the time, make you feel like you have water in your ear and there's like this tickle sensation that goes on in your ear and you're trying to like dig that itch and all you're getting is this gross amount of earwax that was never really there before and I blame that on the, I'm gonna call it oil changes going on in our physical body. I want you to pay attention to the temperature changes because again, likely on the cold side, we are going to be running hot towards the end of Gemini season. So enjoy the cold now because it is going to make a dramatic change. But even though we're on the chillier side, it's amazing to me that we're still having night sweats. Our dreamscape is definitely blending reality with non-reality, blending, I'm going to say certain topics and themes with each other. I'll give you an example. Um, maybe you are in your childhood house, but you are with someone that you've never met. So those two don't really make sense. Maybe you're dreaming of an ex, but maybe that ex is in a situation that that ex was never in with you. You were in that with someone else. So now there's like a blending and overlapping of storylines, if you will. The dreamscape just seems to be very cryptic, very weird, but a lot more based in reality than in fantasy, let's say. There's not a whole lot of really wild concepts. The, co the concepts that we're kind of, you know, dreamscaping around are very much based in reality. They're just merging with other topics and themes and other storylines of our existence that don't match the characters or don't match you know, the landscape or don't match the topics and themes or even the emotions that you felt towards that person, you may feel very differently towards them in a dreamscape. But yeah, the night sweats are just incredible. I blame that on the detox part of things because that's what happens to us in the night is that all of our organs go through their own detoxing time. And when you're having night sweats, it's hugely indicative that, you know, you're having a hard time purging or releasing a lot of the energy, a lot of the literal crap uh, that your body is trying to kind of get out of your body. I want you to pay attention to sore gums, to even sore tongue. Maybe you're biting your tongue. Maybe there's a lot of fire in this mouth space. Again, Mercury is in Taurus energy, so we're only speaking on things that are very important to be spoken upon. Trust me, we're all going to be chatty Cathy's and be verbal vomiting of, over everybody once Mercury moves into Gemini energy. But I just feel like there's a lot of tension. 
There's a lot of uh, things that we're trying to bite our tongue on. And so we're holding a lot of that energy in our mouths and it has to manifest as irritation somewhere. And it just feels like we're biting our tongues or we have little, you know, bumpies on our tongues or our gums are sore or there's a certain tooth that is giving us issues. Again, think about what it is that you want to say that you haven't said if you're experiencing these particular energy blockages in your mouth. The last thing that I want to talk about, and I know like I'm, I'm in Canada, so like, you know, the, the blooms are blooming, the bugs are out there too. So, you know, it is the time of the season, but has anybody kind of noticed that the bugs are a little bit more buggier than normal? And I mean like bug, 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 like agitate you, agitate you, agitate you. I kind of feel, and I know this sounds a little bit crazy, but I kind of feel that different bugs get attracted to you based off of the vibration and frequency in which you're resonating at. And I think it's very indicative if you pay attention to the bugs that are always bugging you and what kind of bugs they are and what they're doing to you. I think it's very indicative of your overall energy and your mental state. And so, you know, the buzzy bugs that are out there right now have just been driving me nuts. And that to me is because me and my head, I'm buzzing around. I'm having a hard time concentrating. I kind of get a little bit, I'm going to say nervous around the big buzzers because they usually have stingers with them and I do not like to get stung. But at the same time, it just feels like all the bugs come at you. It's like I walk outdoors and it's, I feel like I just have a bug magnet on me and they just come at me and they, they want a little bit of my blood. They want a little bit of my hair. They want to just smell my overall smell. And it just feels like they're obsessed with me. And I know that sounds like a very stupid thing to say, but with all the other things that they could be obsessed with out in the world, why are all the bugs coming at me? I know it cannot only be me. I just think that there's a, a huge overwhelming surge of the bugs, especially the buzzy bugs at this particular point in time. And I'm just kind of curious, has anybody noticed a more overwhelming agitation with the bugs coming at you trying to bug you? And is it the same kind of bug? And can you make some kind of spiritual connection or energetic connection to the bug that is bugging you and the energy that you may be projecting out into the world and resonating at? Um, again, these are the things that I think about. These are the things that, you know, consume my time, my energy, my attention. And uh, I'm tired of being bugged by the bugs. And so hopefully... Um, we can make some connections here where, again, the irritation that we're all currently sitting in within our own selves, within our own skin, within our own space, that is being manifested by bugs coming to bug us and agitate us and put us in a state of frustration. And again, I would like to think that, you know, Mars in his place of power in this Aries energy has all beings kind of frustrated and restless and have ants in their pants. I don't know if bugs can have ants in their pants, but that's an interesting concept that maybe we could explore. I'm sure bugs get agitated too. Um, so it's just, you know, it's just these types of things that I think that sometimes are fun to think about because again, it expands the mind and that's what we're here to do in Gemini season. Okay, guys, I think that's all that I wanted to talk about for this particular episode. I thank you so much for tuning in. I send you so much love and let's all walk into June as confidently as possible and ready for some of these energetic shifts to put us on a brand new path. I'm wishing you nothing but love. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>